hiding in plain sight. Brothers and sisters, it would not be slander to say African Americans have been deceived to perceive and believe what has been wrongly taught to them as world history, science, genetics, and truth. Our enemy for millenniums have been able to skew the facts, confound the masses, and muddy the waters of his seed's existence. Until now. One of the evildoer's main weapons is the fact that history is lost within two generations. For instance, this next generation of children will grow up thinking homosexuality has always been a normal way of life. They will only perceive what is put in front of them as their normal environment. Furthering this affliction is the state of Texas where the notion of the true nature of African American slavery has been erased. The state board has replaced all books with all references and even the word slavery from them. All future generations will learn and perceive what was truly the most cruel and unusual servitude in the history of mankind simply as unpaid apprenticeships. How disrespectful is that? I have always said African Americans are deceived waiting for the great deception talked about in the Bible when in fact the greatest part of the deception has already been sprung. The amalgamation of the wheat, Eve seed, and the tear, serpent seed. Genesis 3 and 15. Quote, And I will put enmity, which is hatred, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. According to the Hebrew Concordance Lexicon under C, zero, number 02233, meaning offspring, descendants, posterity, children, semen, vir viral, seed. We, what we consider today as normal was not considered normal in the not so distant past. Doesn't it strike you strange that ancient Israelites detestable dispensation towards only the Gentile nations? Sure, they were forbidden to deal with the other nations, but their disdainment for the Gentiles was unmatched. Modern images of the ancient Aboriginal Romans and the peoples of the Mediterranean regions are false. In fact, the Phoenicians, blue-black Africans, fought, colonized, and was massive traders all throughout the Mediterranean. Look at any ancient mural of the ancient Etruscans, original uh, Italians. You will see the most beautiful golden bronze people with dark hair and blue eyes enjoying life to the fullest. No, what we have before us today are anomalies of the ages, but because you and I have grown up seeing, touching, and talking to them, we naturally assume who we have been communicating with was just as genetically normal and rooted in the annals of history as your ancestors are. I am sure we have all heard the parable about those who assume things, right? You make an ass out of you and me. I ask unto you this day, gentle stranger, what if I can prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt the Caucasians of the Aryan races of the world are not of the same stock root of mankind as the rest of the world? Would you be interested? If I sweeten the pot by pinpointing the seed of the serpent through informational facts that Caucasian academia experts have published, because you know African Americans don't, don't read books, nevertheless write them, would that sit in your tummy like the taste of milk and honey? The answers are right in front of our faces, but because we do not perceive the obvious, the enemy is, a, is allowed to continue cloaking his seed within a cocoon of perceptional lies. Case in point. Am I the only person that has wondered why the so-called Caucasian of the Aryan races are the only people on the entire earth with the ability to normally have different color hair and different color eyes? Hell, everyone else has dark hair and dark eyes. Am I the only person that has balked at all scientific explanation nonsense why their skin color is not like everyone else on the face of the planet? For example, even though the Aboriginal Indians Pakistanis and Mongolians are considered Aryan, why do they all have dark hair, dark eyes, and skin?
Their skin adapting to the cold climate cannot be the correct explanation because the Eskimos and the Mongolians also live in extreme weather and their hair and eye color are consistent with the rest of humanity. All Asians are said to have originated from the Aryan races, yet they also have dark hair and dark eyes. In fact, if you look at any newsreel of the Aboriginal Asians of the past, the Ainu Mountain people, they also have dark, dark skin, just like the African Americans. Am I the only person that has prayed paid attention in anatomy, physiology, and genetics classes and wondered why the so-called Caucasians of the Aryan races originated an ABO blood type that would have been impossible to have come slash mutated from any other human on earth? Or how genetics proved the modern Europeans stem from two entirely different races of beings that were not of the out of Africa people like you and I? Am I the only person that has wondered how could the European Aryans be the last to evolve but yet have conquered and filled the entire earth with lies, social upheaval, and violence? What I'm basically asking is, am I the only person that have come to the educated guess that people we call Europeans are the seed of the devil? Well, I'm writing to you this day to convince you through anatomy and physiology, genetics, history, and the African American history book, the Bible, the answers to your questions are evident and have always been in plain sight. Come gentle strangers, go with me on a comprehensive journey through history's past so that we may understand the present and future. Wheat and the Tear slash Neanderthal. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence has it tares? And he said unto them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in that time of the harvest, I will say to the reaper, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them, and bundle, bind them in bundles, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. I'm going to keep going. All of these things spake the Messiah unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled that. They might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which has been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then the Messiah sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tear of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered up and burnt in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdoms all that, that offend, and them that do iniquity. Example. According to the Eastern Bible Dictionary under Ted, quote, A bearded Darnell, mentioned only in Matthew 13, 25 through 30. It is a lolium some other technical name, a species of ryegrass, a seed which are a strong spormific poison. It bears the closest, again, it bears the closest, one more time, it bears the closest resemblance to wheat till the ears appear. And only then, what? Only then, when? Only then the difference is discovered. It grows plentiful in Syria and Palestine. 
Example, I have always said mankind will fall under its own weight. For this example, the wealth of information readily available to the world in this culprit is the culprit. One of the many downsides, downsides to capitalization of the world is the unquenchable need for new industries and development. Status quo is a nasty little word no capitalist in their right mind would, would want to hear. For this reason, subject matters and facts that were once taboo and only for those in academia have found their way into the front page news. Case in point, modern genetic scientists are trying to keep up with the new genetic evidence being discovered daily. One such discovery is the beginning of our journey. The Aryan races amalgamated with the so-called Neanderthals. According to Discovery News on the Neanderthals, human interbred, DNA proves. Quote, a newly mapped Neanderthal genome provided strong evidence that humans and Neanderthals interbred. Between 1 to 4% of the DNA of many humans living today likely came from Neanderthals. Peoples of European and Asian heritage are most likely to carry the Neanderthal gene. It's official. Most of us are part Neanderthal. The first draft sequence of the Neanderthal genome has provided the strongest evidence yet, the modern hu yet that modern humans and Neanderthals interbred and that all non-Africans today have Neanderthal gene fragments in their genetic codes. Example, simply put, the peoples of U Europe and Asia, along with the upper class worldwide, are mixed with genes not of the human genus. The percentage amount given is a word trick to soften the blow of such a monumental discovery. Why? Because we share 98.4% of the same genes with a chimpanzee, 95% with a dog, and 74% with a microscopic roundworm. There is no discernible difference in the DNA of a wolf and a Labrador retriever, yet their inbred behavioral differences are night and day. What's meaningful is, what, what's meaningful is which genes differ and how are they patterned, not the percentage of the genes. A tiny number of genes can translate into a huge functional difference, so a 4% shift makes a gigantic difference in appearance and behavior. The genetic difference between a healthy baby and a baby born with severe retardation or other physical problems could be as little as, you get this now, 0.000000033%. I am not a mathematician. But I think that number is far less than the 4% different scientists now profess are floating around in the Caucasian's blood. Now add this into your equation. The reason 99% of the 50,000 genes are alike is due to the fact that 98% of all gene codes are everyone, that everyone needs for the essentials of life, i.e. involuntary response organs blood vessels, spleen, lymph nodes, etc. Another example. Did you know the genetic difference between the so-called African American and Caucasians are greater than the difference between some dog breeds, bird species, etc.? According to the in Inquiry into Life, which was my old college anatomy book, on the genetic difference between the races. Quote, thus, when we examine the genetic difference between blacks and whites, we find a difference of about 0.02%. Those who play the numbers game try to act like this number is insignificant. But remember that 0.02% represents almost 20,000 different pairs differences in DNA. So this difference is more than 10 times the difference between a man and a woman of the same race. If gender is a reality, then race must certainly be a reality. Quote, one of the most powerful tools of modern genetics in analyzing how different animals or people are related to one another is mitochondrial DNA. This is DNA which is in the mitochondria of every cell and has no relation to the nuclear DNA, which is the DNA we have 
discussed thus far. Comparing all white populations, the mitochondrial DNA among whites is found to differ by less than 0.2%. So they, they right there on each other. However, comparing the mitochondrial DNA of blacks and whites, the difference of 0.6% is found. More than three times the difference. In other words, <laughs> if you find two, if you find the two most different white people you can find, the difference between either of them and a black person will be at least three times as much the difference between themselves. Simply put, white people do not have the same genetic makeup as black people do. They may be of the same species, but are definitely of a separate and distinct genus. A common misconception should be refuted before we proceed. Just because two animals or people can breed does not mean that they are the same genus. Different genus of dogs and wolves, house cats and bobcats, and an array of different birds can breed. Anyone who has a mutt for a dog can attest to this fact. And we all know a jackass and a horse can breed to produce a donkey. The only problem is, the donkey is sterile. Now let's equate this same simple logic to humans. The infertility and reproductive industries are one of the fastest growing money makers in the world, with Europeans outnumbering all other races by far needing help having children. It is my educated guess the reason the white people is having difficulty having children is due to the fact that they are splintered into three different genus. And just like the jackass and the horse, the product is usually sterile unless mated with another of the same genus. If you allow your perception to shift and perceive this minimal amount of research thus far, it should all make perfect sense. Why? How? Because all the leading medical books are littered with references to how race plays a direct role in the diagnosis and treatment of the patient. For example, it is a known fact non-whites respond to a much lower dosage to antipsychotic drugs than whites. Caucasians have a wide variety of ailments and diseases that only affect them as a whole. In fact, are you ready for a double dose of diabolical deception? Their white skin is a testament to the fact they are more different from the rest of humanity as a dog is to a wolf. You don't believe me? According to the Roslyn Harding of the John Ratcliffe Institute of Molecular Medicine at Oxford University, quote, studies of Neanderthal and modern human mtDNA show small differences. Excuse me. In a population based on 700 Eurasians and 240 Africans, all Neanderthal mutations in the youngest Neanderthal from Russia are present except one. And additionally, the analyst shows that the genetic difference is smaller between late Neanderthals and modern humans than between older Neanderthals and moderns. This is not compatible with the replacement theory. Again, this is not compatible with the replacement theory. That replacement theory is junk. But let me keep going. One, the PDHA1 located on the X chromosome shows two very distinct polymorphosis. One exists in both Africa and out of Africa, while the other only exists out of Africa. The African version shows large diversity, while the non-African versions seem to be introduced now, now get this, 50,000 years ago. Now, stop. We're not going to worry about uh, the year amount. They're going to say 50,000 years, 60,000 years. That they're still academia and they still are pigeonholed into this Darwinism. Because uh, if they're not, then no more grants. I mean, the world will be turned on its ear. But it's slowly changing, slowly changing. So let's not worry about the amount of years. But what I do want you to worry about, what I do want you to notice, the range in years where all of these things, what they say, came into the modern European. And if you, when you look at it, you'll see the range is around the exact same time. The exact same time. So, simply put, that influx of things that we're going to talk about that only pertains to them, they know when it was 
injected into their DNA. It, it wasn't normal. It was injected. But let's keep going. All right, number two. The factor five ladian was introduced in the northern European population 35 to 40,000 years ago. Mm. This is in a time when there was no people in northern Europe since northern Europe was covered by ice. It instead co coincides with the cohabitation with Neanderthals and northern Europeans have a lot of Neanderthal heritage. Three, the DRD4 has two main alleles, R4 and R7, where R7 is associated with ADHD. It requires six mutations to transfer R4 to R7, and this is very improbable. So it ain't no mutation. It was injected. ADHD was a Neanderthal trait. Now, now remember, things that was normal for them is normal for them. But when it was introduced to us, it's ill normal to us. You, you'll see. I think I'll try to explain a little bit better than that later on. Okay. Uh, four. The Asper quiz has found high prevalence of red hair color in autistic people. Red slash auburn hair and fair skin are related to three mutations in the MC1R, the R151C, R160W, and the D294H. And the origins of these mutations are around 30,000 to 50,000 years. They were introduced by hybridization with the Neanderthals. That's, their, that's what they're saying, not me. Here we go. Number five, Huntington disease is, a Western, is of Western European origin. It has a prevalence of 15 per 100,000 in some Western European populations. It's rare in Asia, Asians, and Africans. HD evolved on a specific haliotype background that is prevalent in European populations only. According to Wikipedia, under multiple sclerosis, quote, the world estimated 1.11 to 2.5 million cases of multiple sclerosis with European, Western Europe having 3,000, 350,000 and U.S. at 250,000. The highest prevalence zone for MS at 50 to 100,000 population are Europe, Russia, Canada, Israel, Northern USA, New Zealand, and Southeast Australia. If I'm correct, that's all predominantly European. Okay, let's keep going. The lowest frequency zones for MA at 5 to 100,000 population are Asia, Africa, and South America. Hmm. In these areas, there are there is a noticeable, noticeable northern slash southern gradient with MS being more prevalent in higher latitudes, temperature regions. Scandinavia and Scotland have the higher, highest incidence than other European countries. Example, red hair, freckles, white skin, autism, ADHD, uh, cystic fibrosis, Asperger's syndrome, Tourette's syndrome, PKU, Huntington disease, etc. You name it, they unleashed it upon the world. What we consider disease in the Caucasian races are normal flora. That's what I was trying to say. Let me say it again. What we consider disease in the Caucasian races are normal flora in the Neanderthal genetic makeup and behavioral patterns. No, the infected genes in the modern humans did not mutate. The normal Neanderthal genes that was lurking within their DNA through the ages through either parent finally manifested itself in that particular generation. That's all. Remember earlier when I said scientists admitted to, to Europeans having 4% Neanderthal genes was a word trick? According to Yahoo News, uh, the fossils of Neanderthal DNA clump in human genome. Quote, scientists isolated the part of the human, modern human genetic blueprint that still contains Neanderthal remnants. Overall, it's barely more than 1% said two studies released Wednesday in the journals Nature and Science. However, 
in some places, such as the DNA related to the skin, the genetic instructions are as much as 70% Neanderthal. Harvard, Univer Harvard researcher, man, some kind of name, that's an Indian name. The lead author of the Nature Study said the place where Neanderthal DNA seemed to have the most influence in the modern human genome has to do with skin and hair. A key said those instructions are as much as 70% Neanderthals. We're more Neanderthal than not in those genes, the key said. Example, if you're still not convinced, and I know some of you are not, go look it up for yourself. I'm tired. No, really. Just click into any Neanderthal website and the information will unfold like a scroll. Remember early when I said modern depictions of the ancient Europeans are false and you bucked your eyes at the, the screen like your name was Buckwheat? Yeah, I know you did it. Well, check this out. According to the Washington Post under DNA shows ancient hunters had blue eyes and dark skin. Quote, a hunter-gatherer who lived in Europe some 7,000 years ago probably had blue eyes and dark skin, a combination that has largely disappeared from the continent in the millennia since, scientists said Tuesday. Discovery, the discovery published in the journal Nature this week was made by scientists from the United States, Europe, and Australia who analyzed ancient DNA extract from the male tooth found in the cave in northern Spain. Example, as you can see, Scientists have studied, studied and concluded certain facts, but I know you are probably saying, are you trying to tell me white people are a mixture of regular people and Neanderthals? If so, that doesn't account for the super large white people that history attests to because the Neanderthals were not tall. If you're thinking this, remember the in the introduction when I said the modern Europeans stem from three entirely different races of beings? Well, the Neanderthal is one of those beings I was speaking of, with the next nugget of genetic information being the second. According to Yahoo News September 17, 2014, under Modern Europeans Descended from Three Groups. Quote, Modern Europeans are descended from three major groups of ancient humans, not two as once previously thought according to a gene analysis published on Wednesday. Until now, the mainstream theory was that Europeans descended from early farmers who moved into Europe from the Middle East about 7,500 years ago, and local hunter-gatherers they interbred with. But a DNA analysis in the journal Nature says, that what says there was a third group in the mix, people from Northern Eurasia. The findings mean that northern Eurasians, who inhabited a vast swath of land stretching across much of Russia and northern Asia, contributed to the gene pool both in Europe and North America. What we find is amb ambiguous evidence that people in Europe have all three of these ancestries, said David Wright of Harvard Medical School, who led the studies with Johannes Cross at Germany's University of, yeah. There was a sharp genetic transition between the era of hunter-gatherers and the farmers, reflecting a major movement of new people into Europe from the Near East, said Wright. Quote again, the ancient northern Eurasians' ancestry is proportionally the smallest component, component everywhere in Europe, never more than 20%. But we find it in nearly every European group we've studied and also in the Caucasus and Near East, said Lassif Lazaristis, one of, Harvard's, one of the Harvard's team. Example, first and foremost, this proves the modern European slash white Turk slash Middle Eastern Turk slash Asian come from three different branches of beings where everyone else came from only one. Did you notice their very beginning was an abomination in that the out of Africa people hooked up with people, Neanderthal and Eurasian, 
that were already living in Europe. To further the affliction, yet another unknown branch, large white people will prove in the last section, amalgamates with the byproduct of the first abomination to create the modern freaks of nature we call Caucasians today. Wow! As you will soon see in the next two sections, these facts are duplicated seamlessly through other avenues that are out of mankind's ability to tamper with, making the evidence impossible to refute. Summary. We have undisputed scientific and genetic evidence by the leading experts in their field attesting to the fact that the ancestors of the Caucasians of the Aryan races fully amalgamated with different genus of beings. I can't call them human, can I? called the Neanderthals and the other peoples of the north. We also have genetic evidence showing Caucasians and so-called African Americans are more genetically different than a ravenous wolf and lassie. We have also concluded through genetic testing, white skin, red hair, and all the other attributes associated with being a Caucasian, which includes their abnormally high rates of physical and character diseases, originated with the Neanderthals and the Northern people and manifested itself through their generations. Last but not least, we have modern genetic evidence the Aboriginal European look just like the frescoes and murals that are now being discovered depicted them, having tawny skin. That's the end of the first section. The next section is ABO blood type, the miscongeniations of the bloodlines. Thank you for listening to this section. Look for the next one.